All right. Um, briefly to uh, get going as far as where is bills, where bills stand right now, the month of death bill is uh, dead, both the House and the Senate. That was the one we talked about at the start of session. Um, it was in, you know, um, recommended by Steve, both. Steve, the, what, mo what month did it die in? <laughs> yeah, day <laughs> one of session. It was, it was kind of DOA because um, none of the stakeholder groups other than, even though it came out of the joint committee, none of the, or the select committee, none of the stakeholder groups other than the police and fire guys were working it. They had uh, their, the teachers and the uh, PERS folks are focused on the plan one COLA. So this one, that one was uh, DOA. But the other two bills that were recommended by the board are moving along and are on schedule. The, um, there was a slight twist to the uh, military, the interrupted military bill. So in the House, there was a competing bill introduced by Representative Paul. And Representative Paul's original bill would have expanded military service to include expeditionary uh, medals. The decision was made at, uh, in the House not to go there because of the cost. And so Representative Paul's bill was amended to put all of the left to board language on it and to add a study of the potential cost of expanding mil interrupted military service to include expeditionary. And that's the bill that moved out of the House. Um, so it's the left to board language plus an additional study. That's House Bill uh, 2655. In the, the, the other uh, board endorsed bills, survivor option re-election, uh, Senator Holy's uh, Senate version of the bill, 6417, it looks like that's the one that's moving. It's out of the Senate and over in the House. Um, also on schedule there, no changes. One new bill that was not um, introduced by the board has to do with confidentiality of DRS records. Um, the Department of Retirement Systems was seeking exemption from public disclosure for some medical records that for whatever reason they, they didn't feel were protected by HIPAA, but um, so they wanted this additional protection the bill was amended in the Senate to include the ombudsman records, the records of the left two board, so that Tammy stuff is also uh, protected if there ever was a public records request for that type of info. And that bill has moved out of the Senate and is over in the House. So those are the kind of the three live bills, survivor option reelection, definition of period of war, and the confidentiality of the medical records. Those are the three bills that are moving and that we're tracking. And then there's a, been a couple of other kind of related issues that we're also tracking. Are, do you guys have any questions about those bills? So, uh, Steve, for yeah. the month of death payment, so will that come up again or that is just totally dead and buried? Well, it's... Uh, it's dead for this session when the board has, when you guys have your first regular meeting of the year, which is looking like the April meeting, um, we'll do the interim preview and we'll talk to you about whether or not this is an issue that you want to continue to work on. And I imagine the select committee will have the same discussion when they start their interim planning. Thank you. Okay. The, um, the uh, budgets both included money for the uh, board to move 
and for the uh, budget packages that we had out there. And uh, I was going to mention it in our, the administrative update. The agency finally received approval from OFM to move so we can begin working with DES to look at potential places. The rough timeline for the move is April of 2021, so a little over a year from now. It's possible, depending on what we find, um, that we could end up moving maybe a little bit sooner, maybe as soon as January of 2021, but I don't expect that there'll be any um, disruption to your interim schedule for this for this coming interim. I think all the meetings will be here in the SIB boardroom like originally planned. During session, so all of the stakeholder groups have been having uh, conferences uh, to talk about legislative issues with their members, the Fraternal Order of Police, the Washington State Council of Firefighters, and WACOPS all had meetings. Um, we had uh, board team members there at all of those meetings to answer questions about the board bills As far as other legislation, are there any questions about those, about outreach or anything like that? Uh, Steve, it's Jason. I got uh, one, I guess, question, comment that <clears throat> I don't necessarily know if it's something that we as the left board need to look at, but I, as uh, the left board, member of getting lots of questions um my my agency was just notified today again that uh, pdr request was done at drs by the seattle Times, and so i'm getting lots of questions about hey how does this work and why are they asked for this information and you know, I, I do the best i can but i can see this become a global issue and i just don't know if it's going to land in our lap and then if it does if it's even even anything that we can actually address or not um, I was having a hard time kind of hearing hearing you there, uh, Jason. It, um, but you, you had uh, a member who had a bunch of questions, but I didn't hear specifically what the question was. Sure. So um, my okay. a, a HR department here at the Sheriff's Office notified uh -huh. um, everybody uh, that works for the Sheriff's Office that's in the retirement systems at the Seattle Times – Oh uh, yeah. Just did a PDR request, so I got th this you. is the this is actually the third one that's been sent out by the HR department. Uh, of course, we know about the other ones. Um, I think it's the Freedom Foundation that's doing. Them. So uh, people are getting more and more concerned because now it's becoming common. And like I, I said, um, I'm not sure if this falls in our wheelhouse or not, but uh, I'm getting lots of questions. I don't know if anybody else is, but I can well, see it maybe something that falls in our wheelhouse, and then I just don't know if that's something that uh, is we would respond to or not. There, there has been a general discussion about the, this issue with all of the, um, all, amongst the, all of the labor communities. So the uh, Freedom Foundation, for instance, uh, did a public disclosure request to DRS, not just for law enforcement officers, but for firefighters and teachers and public employees. Um, Historically, there is certain information that's part of your retirement calculation, for instance, like your age, so your birth date, um, that is considered part of your retirement info. Now, DRS uh, receives and tracks a lot of additional information. And so some of the groups now have kind of tumbled to the fact that be between a public disclosure request to DRS and maybe one to the county auditors, you can pretty much get the home address of just about anybody in the uh, state that you want to get. Now, and that's what Freedom Foundation is doing, that multiple 
uh, request to different people. So for instance, DRS doesn't give your home address. DRS also, there are um, exemptions for law enforcement officers. Now with respect to the, the Seattle Times, that protection for law enforcement officers doesn't apply to the media. So for instance, Freedom Foundation can request the info and DRS will say no. But if the Seattle Times requests it, then they provide it. And the Times is under strict limits. They can't share that information. They can't sell that information. They use it. Um, there used to be a series of articles that they would run about everywhere around the country. It was kind of a thing for a while. Who owes pensions were above 100000 a year. Haven't seen those articles too much anymore. But the Times does, they've testified, they do keep track of certain um, public employees, whether those be law enforcement officers or otherwise, that are newsworthy, and they want the pension information as a part of that. So, for instance, perhaps a law enforcement officer who um, gets uh, suspended in one jurisdiction and then gets rehired in another jurisdiction. Those are the types of stories that they're kind of fishing for with this type of um, information request, uh, Jason. But right now there is no statutory prohibition against providing it to the media but there are some statutory protections so your guys for instance don't have to worry about some um, convict um, making a public records request and getting this same kind of information or some kind of angry um, customer of yours for instance making this kind of request that being said the um, they're getting the the amount of information that's being stored by numbers of jurisdictions around and the broad public records uh, provisions in the state of Washington are kind of uh, um, getting additional scrutiny right now. Partly the Freedom Foundation's using it for their own marketing, if you will, but it has um, uh, certain other cases have come up, people tracking down ex-spouses or people that they had restraining orders against. And so there's been like a patchwork um, piecemeal response to those. Employers can't provide home addresses of somebody if there's a, a court order. But you can get the home address from somebody other than the employer. You just need to know who to ask. And so trying to, um, the, having the public records laws keep up with other laws and keep up with technology right now is an ongoing struggle. The medical records is really the focus of the bills this session because the media has said they're not after medical records. So that's an area where they've been willing to um, agree to restrictions or changes in public records laws. But um, as far as some of the other um, types of information, they still want it. And that's, that's going to be a much bigger, broader issue than just um, law enforcement officers or left members. Steve, another issue which is uh, actually date of birth, which is really worried to a lot of people, although as I understand it, and that's the Supreme Court uh, judgment that say, well, that is uh, uh, also public record, but uh, date of birth is uh, a concern to some of my, uh, uh, some of the members that I've talked to. Yeah, it's... Um it used to be, for instance, um, certain, you know, for date of birth. That's usually one of the, pri you know, private information questions that a lot of people will use over the phone to verify your identity, like if you call your bank or something. But it does happen to be also, in a sense, part of the retirement calculation. 
So that's something that in the past DRS has been required to um, release. This will probably, they'll probably get some attention. One of the things, for instance, is there was a, a push to ask the Department of Retirement Systems to begin collecting even more information, some of which has nothing to do with pensions. Like, for instance, I mentioned employers are not um, supposed to uh, provide home addresses if there's a court record on file. Well, but the DRS doesn't know if the employer has a court record on file, so that, well, maybe you should send that to DRS. Maybe you should send information to DRS about what labor group, uh, you know, what collective bargaining group, what union people belong to. Um, and the purpose of this is just to get DRS to collect more info, to make DRS essentially the public record storehouse, uh, make some of these public records even more easy than they are now. And uh, the Department of Retirement Systems is concerned they, that's not their mission. Uh, but they can see now that um, as more knowledge grows about a number, hundreds of thousands of uh, public employees, all the public employees virtually in the state in one way or another are probably in their database and quite a bit of information about them is in their database that um, DRS is kind of becoming the center of this brewing controversy over how much public records are uh, and should be released. Uh, Steve, I'm, yeah, I'm just throwing this out for discussion. I'm wondering if it is, you know, maybe not this time around, but down the road, if it's something that the board wants to take on, Evidently, the public record request laws have not caught up with the online theft or crime because uh, when you have somebody's home address, somebody's name, somebody's birthday, based on the current issue of identity theft, how much more does it take? to actually assume somebody's uh, identity. Well, so I think, uh, you know, I think, uh, yes, there needs to be public disclosure for some of these things, but I think some of this law needs to caught up with the reality of today. Well, and whether the board likes to take that on, I don't know, but I think uh, uh, the, the world is changing and... Uh, I will ask the Department of Retirement Systems if they would be willing to do a briefing, potentially at the April meeting, when you guys are considering what to do for the interim, um, or as soon as they can in the interim, to give you guys an overview of the what the public records laws are now in terms of how they apply to uh, police and fire and what types of issues DRS is facing and that I think will be helpful to kind of get a understanding of the issue I don't know if the select committee is planning on doing the same kind of thing or not other questions about the public records okay Everything is, um, as far as session goes, everything is right on track still. I don't want to jinx it, but to end on time. And um, there was, uh, there's been a couple of other um, police and fire kind of related issues. For instance, there was a group of uh, Ever uh, medics from Evergreen Hospital in King County uh, trying to get recognition for some of their service prior to 2003. Uh, those bills at this point in time don't seem to be going anywhere, but there may, may be a study coming out of that. There was, um, so we'll, anyway, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on what potential 
studies might pop up. The evergreen one I mentioned because that would require uh, additional resources to work with Ice Miller and answer some legal questions that came up w regarding the bills. We know there's a study about interrupted military, but that we'll, we're planning on doing with um, existing resources. Jacob, it, Jacob probably, well, not even probably, Jacob knows more about that issue right now than anyone in the state. So I think we're ideally suited to handle that study. Um, any other questions about session? Okay, the next meeting is March 25th. We're still planning on that being an uh, electronic meeting and then we'll planning on the first regular meeting of the interim being April and the April meeting will include a session recap and a interim preview. Uh, Steve, just so that, you know, I think I'll be out of town for the March 25th meeting. So uh, I would like to request uh, 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 excuse absence or something like that. Yeah. Now, the, again, the March 25th meeting will probably be just like this meeting um, a day. Okay. Um, I'll be out of the country, so I won't be able to call in either. Yes, and attendance for the um, for the these kind of session update meetings is not um, per per your policy. That's different from the attendance at the regular meetings. Okay. So you're already excused. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay, we'll keep the website up to date. And if you hear anything, especially crazy rumors or anything like that, um, we're Rumor Control Central. So you can call me or text me at any time. Any time. Okay. Evenings, we, um, I may not answer, we do. but um, <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, guys.